What's up squad, my name is ESO and welcome to the channel. In this video guide I'll be showing you how to get the unique splatter cannon weapon and I'll also be showing you how to set it up to make it do the best possible damage because I've seen a lot of people put the wrong kind of modifications on this weapon so I'll be showing you the best possible setup that you can do for it because if done correctly this is definitely one of the best weapons in Fallout 4 and indeed one of the best weapons in Nuka World. You'll notice that the legendary effect on this weapon says that it increases damage for each consecutive shot. So basically if you fire one shot it does the normal damage of the weapon and then the next shot does plus 15% and the one after that does plus 30% and that keeps on stacking up to 10 times. This means that after 10 shots your weapon will do an extra 150% damage. Now if you build your character and weapon correctly you can make that figure absolutely monstrous. So to get this weapon you will of course need the Nuka Cola World DLC. Once you have it to acquire the weapon itself come here on the map to Nuka Town USA where you first arrive in the DLC. Once you're here just head over to the Nuka Town market. You can't miss it it's located here on your pit boy. Once you're within the walls of the market, once you're within the walls of the market, we must find Aaron Corbett. After a short conversation where he whines about his life, he will allow you to barter with him. The unique rifle, the splatter cannon, can be found in the weapons section, and the price of this weapon is going to depend on your character's charisma level. Now there are a few things we can do to lower this price, because as you may have noticed, this is the most expensive weapon available in the game. So firstly, you're going to want to get the cap collector perk. And secondly, I'll leave a quick guide in the description of several things that you can do in order to raise your charisma level, just temporarily, because that will reduce the amount you have to pay for this weapon, because that's a lot of caps. Also, while you're here, make sure that you buy some 7.62mm rounds from Aaron, because this new type of weapon uses a new ammo type that we probably don't have yet, because you might have just arrived at Nuka World. So let me now tell you how to build this weapon and how to maximise its damage. So first off, we must acquire the correct perks. Get the Commando perk. At max rank, this will make automatic weapons do double damage and also stagger your opponents. And then grab the Bloody Mess perk. At max rank of the Bloody Mess perk, it makes you do an additional 15% damage to targets. This will also stack with the Splatter Cannon's legendary effect for an additional 30% damage boost. And then the shot after that will do plus 30% and then plus 15% of that 30%. So you'll actually be multiplying that multiple if that makes sense. Which is why Bloody Mess is so important to use with this weapon. So next when it comes to building our weapon, we really want to maximise our firing rate. Because of course the faster we fire bullets into our enemy, the faster that legendary effect comes into play and the faster it stacks up. You'll find that this weapon is insanely useful versus really big enemies with lots and lots of health like people in power armor but especially super mutant behemoths or death claws. This weapon is the best in the game to deal with those kinds of enemies. For smaller enemies with less health you're going to find that weapons with the explosive legendary effect are actually more useful to you. So weapons like the spray and pray which I'll leave a link to down in the description below. That said this weapon does really deal with everything anyway. So the first thing we need to mod our weapon with is the powerful receiver. This improves the damage and fire rate of the weapon and this is absolutely key to how we're going to use it because we want to fire as fast as possible to maximize our damage. Next up we're going to need the long covered sniper rifle barrel. This gives us longer range, better recoil and also a better sighted accuracy. And by the time we're finished with this weapon it's going to have literally no recoil whatsoever. Even from hip fire. Then for the stock we're going to go with the light stock. This gives us exceptional recoil improvements. So the weapon will be much easier to aim and won't shake about at all. Next up grab the quick eject drum mag. This has the largest ammo capacity of all so we're never going to need to reload but when you do actually need to reload it will happen very very quickly. This synergizes really really well with the automatic receiver we're using. And lastly for the scope I'll be using the long range night vision scope. You may prefer to use the reflex scope for easy aiming though. The choice is completely up to you but due to the fact there is actually no recoil whatsoever on this weapon like let me show you this example. This is me aiming for a scope and as you can see there's no recoil and then if I go for hip firing there's still literally no recoil at all like the weapon's not even raising up. 
So because there's no recoil, what you find is that if you have a scope, you can shoot enemies from really long range. But if anyone's close to you, you can just hip fire at them and it's still really good accuracy. This means that you can literally cover any situation with one weapon. You'll never even have to swap to a close range weapon or a sniper for long range things. The only drawback is that I did find there was a bit of spread at very long range when using the scope on the sniper rifle. So do bear that in mind if you're going for like one hit kill headshots at a really long range. But finally, we're going to add on the suppressor because what you'll find is that you can do ridiculous sneak attack damage because your sneak attacks also stack with the legendary effect on this weapon. In fact, if we also get the ninja perk, which gives us 350% more damage when you do a sneak attack on an enemy. And that's for each bullet that you're still sneaking for. And because enemies don't instantly detect you when you fire a shot at them, you can quite easily fire 10 shots into an enemy, given that they don't die too quickly. And that will give you 150% damage boost for the 10 hits that stack with the legendary effect. And then plus 350% from the ninja perk. And plus 15% again from bloody mess. So that's a total of 515% more damage than you would be doing if you weren't sneaking. So it's definitely worth thinking about that ninja perk, especially considering you can attack somebody from the other side of the map. Even though it's not gonna be amazingly accurate, you'll still be sneaking and you can just wipe out so many people without them knowing you're ever there. So I obviously have a few more tips for this weapon. Firstly, I would suggest only using it outside vats because that's how you're going to maximize the damage. Inside vats, you only fire three shots with this weapon. So obviously those three shots still stack in damage, but it's going to be a lot less damage than if you were just pelting an enemy rapid firing at them. There are of course certain situations where it can help to use vats, but most of the time you're going to do more damage faster outside of vats. Secondly, I'd also say that this is not the weapon for survival. It's still very good on survival difficulty, but what you'll find is that you can't build up 10 shots to get that massive boost in damage that obviously scales up after each shot because the enemy will already be dead. So you'd actually be better off going with a weapon like the spray and pray gun or just a normal sniper rifle that's going to give you a huge amount of damage in one shot because that's just going to instantly kill someone. Because with this weapon, it does less damage before it come, gets to the point where it's doing more damage than the spray and pray weapon. And by the time it does, that enemy's already dead. But then that said, this weapon does require less perks to be as useful as the spray and pray weapon, which you need the demolition perk for. So you know, there are pros and cons to this weapon. But guys, if you did enjoy this video and you did find it helpful, please do give the video a like. And you can of course follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and even just subscribe to the channel so you never miss another Fallout 4 video guide. Thanks again for watching guys, my name is ESO and I will see you, loyal subscriber, in the next Fallout 4 video guide. Goodbye and I hope you enjoy this awesome weapon montage that I made just for fun.